All right, so let's go ahead and do our defensive player of the year predictions. Davis, who do you got? The reigning two-time MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, baby. So the main reason why uh, I have Giannis winning defensive player of the year is because I think he's not going to be getting MVP. Um, And because of that, they still need to be giving him some type of award love as we've seen in the past. Like it it kind of happens. Like you can call it for what you want. Like, yeah, it's a little cheap. He might not be the most elite uh, defensive player. Maybe Anthony Davis or Rudy Gobert or Bam will have a breakout defensive season um, on top of what he had last season. But I still think at the end of the day, Giannis is a generational talent and they're going to want to be giving him some type of love if they snub him for MVP, which they will. So defensive player of the year is just where it's going to happen. He's going to get the award, and I've never been so sure of a pick in my life. Full take. Full take. Uh, So I I have AD as defensive player of the year. I just think – I mean, he was the runner-up last year. I think losing JaVel McGee, Dwight Howard at the center position, the the Lakers are really going to ask him to sort of step up on that side of the ball and really anchor their defense because Mark Gasol and Montrez Harold aren't known as defensive monsters by any means. And so I really think they're going to ask AD to sort of solidify that team on that side of the basketball. And that's why I really think he's going to step up his game on that end. And I think he's going to be defensive player of the year. I mean, there's not too much to say about it. He can also guard one through five. So we're talking runner-ups, right? So from last season, you remember who actually won defensive player of the year, right? Who who was he runner-up to? I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, that's right. It was Giannis Antetokounmpo. And uh, so, yeah, there's no reason that Giannis is going to – He's he went from two-time MVP to now, with this season, two-time reigning defensive player of the year. And then, you know, maybe one day he'll be coach of the year once he can speak English a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, there's just a lot of play. There's a lot of play. <laughs> I just, I just think AD is gonna have the opportunity to put up some incredible defensive numbers. I mean, unlike Giannis, AD is someone who can guard the pick and the roll. He guards yeah. the. He he can guard both Not players at the, the same pick, time. But the role. He is in, like like I'm, I don't want to take anything away from Giannis. I mean, Giannis is excellent defensively. But people don't understand, like, how good Anthony Davis is on that side of the basketball. There is very, very few people in the NBA he cannot guard. He, he can steal the ball. He can block the ball. He can play in all sorts of defensive schemes. He is unreal. And so I just think he's going to step up for the Lakers this year. And I think LeBron's going to push him competitively and really say, hey, you can go get this award. I think they're going to push him to try and win that this year. And I, I think that's what I expect him to do. Do you have any dark horse candidates for defensive player of the year? I don't know how dark of a horse we're talking here, but I'll just give you a hint. That's my hint. Really? Yeah. Big ass hands, right? Okay. So Kawhi Leonard is obviously who we're talking about. For you audio listeners, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page so you can get the full juicy content and, uh, you know, some of these inside scoops that you can't get. The visual, um, visual information. Yeah, Yeah, David's in San Francisco right now in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. It's beautiful. Um, But Kawhi Leonard, I think a lot of people – were I mean obviously a lot of people were extremely high on Kawhi Leonard and what the Clippers could do going into last season yes they fell short of their expectations and with their load management different aspects through the regular season people don't have people weren't really revering them quite as um, you know the player that he was coming into this season but I still think kind of with that chip on his shoulder I think Kawhi Leonard really has a chance to prove a lot of the skeptics and haters wrong um, that, you know, were, were calling him overrated, you know, had problems with how he got signed for the Clippers with this whole investigation going on. Um, there, there's just a whole lot of turmoil going on. But that being said, I still think he's one of the best wing defenders in the league, not even close. And so if it doesn't go to a big man, um, 
like AD or like Giannis, like Rudy Gobert, like Bam Adebayo, the best wing defender still is and always will be Kawhi Leonard. And a dark horse, dark horse candidate, if they ever decide to, you know, correctly evaluate defensive impact um, and, you know, truly evaluate the award, uh, Marcus Smart will be the winner. I think Marcus Smart's a good choice. Of the- I have a good dark horse player of the year, or defense player of the year candidate, and that would be Ben Simmons. I love it. I think I he's someone it. who could really, I mean, he's another player very, not necessarily on the defensive capabilities as AD, but someone that can really truly guard that one through five. I think this year was the first time I really was like, oh my goodness, like, he, like Ben Simmons is actually like a freak on defense. Like, I think, I think defense actually might be his like, best skill I think you could argue oh, he's yeah. better defensively than he is as a passer of the ball which he's incredible with by the way um I, I think he's someone that could honestly win that that award at some point in his career and maybe here well, within this season I don't know maybe yeah. he takes a leap and sort of snags an award out from some of the other uh defensive big men in the league yeah if all you uh listeners out there want to hear more juicy Ben Simmons talk uh, make sure you listen to our uh, bold predictions episode that is also coming out today um but yeah there's gonna be a lot of ben simmons discussion over on that podcast oh, episode yeah. so uh you know we're here for all of it but we don't want to be beating a dead horse because that one's already recorded um so with that do you have anything else you want to talk about defensively voters of the nba davis you brought this up but i want to i want to harp on it can we please, 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 please correctly evaluate not only this award, but also the all NBA defensive teams? Can Regret. we please not make outrageous decisions like putting Patrick Beverly above Drew Holiday? Please, I beg of you. Why? Can we not do this? Because these types of awards have financial and legacy impacts for these players. So I beg of you, please correctly evaluate these awards. Don't take them as a joke. Don't put Patrick Beverly above Drew Holiday, arguably the second best defensive guard in the NBA behind Marcus Smart. Not on an all-NBA defensive team. Thank you. So I'm going to look directly at the camera for this one. Adam Silver, we've said it in the past and we'll say it again. If you want these awards done right, you know who to call. Davis Perry and David Poteet, the Darky Sports Podcast That's personalities, right. because we will get it right. The rest of the the rest of these uh, media, you know, these these writers and editors from these newspaper they have publications, inherent bias. they have no clue what they're talking. They watch baseball. Do we yep. want baseball viewers to be deciding the awards and outcomes of no. the financial implications of these players? Absolutely not. Adam Silver, you know who to call. All my, right, I, that, that I have my defense. phone. I have my phone on ring. It will not be set to vibrate. I'll be waiting. All right. With that, that ends our defensive player of the year segment. Thank you. 